Hello, my friends. This is Josue, co-founder of Empathy Cafe blog. Um, we've been having uh, stories uh, in the last few weeks. We've gone, we've gone live with real people and we've had uh, real conversations. So you know that our mantra, what we always talk about is that uh, everybody's got a story that can change your heart. So today, um, the story that we want to talk about is about Ashley, and I think she's ready to join us. Uh, yes. Waiting for Ashley, she's gonna be just there in a second. Hello, hello, hello Ashley. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. It's Thank so you for good. Me. Yeah, we were uh, we were um, chatting a few minutes, a few just a few minutes ago, and we were saying, "Oh, we match." <laughs> <laughs> this was not planned, folks. This was not planned, <laughs> or was it? <laughs> or was it? <laughs> okay, Ashley, do you like to introduce yourself to to our followers, our friends? Yeah, it's actually pretty cool that like we have become friends just through the simple act of social media because we share some similar lifestyle um, like trials that we, you know, we share that positivity and that faith based mindset to know that we're given what God gives us because we can handle it and it's our choice to how we mm -hmm. handle it. Yeah. And I just think you, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, as a, as, as a, um, it's been, I don't know, three, four years. I, I, honestly, I don't know. It's been years. I know it's been years. And I discovered you by, by going to hashtash, I don't know, it was probably chronic pain or, or something like that. Something like um, that. <laughs> because we both share chronic pain. And uh, I saw you. And I remember, I, I distinctively remember when it was, I mean, not the year, but I, I was at... Uh, I was in the, um, I was at Starbucks. I was having coffee and that's what I connected you with you. And I thought, I'm going to pray for this lady, uh, to lift her up because of the pain. And what I have noticed, what I have realized after this time is that uh, originally I was praying for you, but actually throughout your stories, it was you who were inspiring me. <laughs> oh, yeah, before we ever, before we ever DM'd, you know, it's like sometimes you go, you hear some bad news about a friend and you go there and you go with intention, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to pray for this person. I'm going to, I'm going to be for there. And you leave um, being the one who has been encouraged, the one who has been uplifted. <laughs> so this is my experience with you, Ashley. Well, thank you. That is literally my goal in life is to just encourage people to find joy and to be inspired by anybody, anything that, you know, fills their heart and like, just really like, just thank you. That touches me to my core. Well, yeah. that, it, it, it works. Whatever you do, <laughs> it's working. Thank you. I caffeinate often and thank Jesus for my life on the regular. <laughs> So um, our friends that are, that are watching now, um, Ashley is an influencer. And uh, uh, the reason why I wanted to, to have this chat with, with, with you, Ashley, is because I think you are an influencer, influencer in multiple levels. The first thing that we think of, at least I think of when I hear the word influencer is, okay, somebody that is in fashion or uh, something like that, and it influences the, the trends, right? Yeah. He or she knows what the trends are or creates new ones and helps people go through all those things. But uh, you are an influencer in multiple levels. It's not just about fashion. It's about how to live with an injury that wasn't your fault, how to live with a um with an attitude that uh, anybody whether they follow fashion or not can benefit from so well, today you. yeah <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I, it, it is true that, that, that that's that's what I that's what I feel about you. So the, the first, let's talk about the business side of it. Um, can you explain a little bit to me? I I always deal with something different. Yeah. On with her. So I'm thinking either she has a, a huge warehouse behind the, <laughs> where you live, or what is what you do? How you do it? What is what is that? How does your business work? Well, what's really funny is that, like, I never really saw myself as, like, an influencer for a long time. I actually started by sharing just outfit of the days because I had a personal Instagram that I really just was like, you know what? I like my outfit. And if I like my outfit, it puts me in a better mood. Like, mm -hmm. and it's just the proof that how you dress and carry yourself really does have a major impact on your confidence and your personality and on your mindset. So I really started just very simply sharing out through the days. And I'm like, oh, people like seeing my style, like apparently my <laughs> style. And so that's cool. So then I created a separate Instagram, which I initially called Smashingly Dressed, just because I thought it was always going to be about fashion. And uh -huh. then I realized exactly what you said is that I'm, yes, fashion is in like style is a huge factor for me. But for me, it's not about just looking great all the time. It's living a positive lifestyle where every mm -hmm. little factor of your life plays a role into like who you are and what you're representing. And so, yeah, for me, it honestly, and I'm all about that thrifty fashion, you know, that the fact, the statement about maybe she has a warehouse like behind her house. Technically, I have like eight because there are eight Goodwills within like a six mile radius of my house. Oh, wow. So that's pretty fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a lot of clothes. Like there's a closet right there that houses all my like reseller inventory as well as all my jackets and blazers because my closet in my master bedroom is not big enough. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, that's just kind of like how that little portion works is just I collaborate with Goodwill and I try to inspire people through fashion and knowing that what you wear can play a huge factor of that. And then um, also as an influencer, I try to, you know, we, I partner with big and small brands alike, and I try to truly only showcase and represent things that align with my brand. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's just very small. Sorry, I actually have somebody picking up a, an order right now from my <laughs> um, waving at her through my window. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and just, you know, it's just about being authentic and true to who you are and like working with brands that do line up with you and not just saying yes for the sake of saying yes. Like, I don't do dairy. So like if a freaking like a milk company came to me and said, Hey, we'll pay you $300 to use our milk. But I'm like, I don't drink milk. Why would mm -hmm. I say yes? Because that's just falsehood. And you can't, you have to live authentically. Yeah. So that's kind of just that little, little snippet behind the influencer world. How, how do you know if, if a, if a brand like a fashion brand um, aligns with your, um, your ethics and, and your, um, your morals or your your point of view how, how do you know for me it's um i try very hard to maintain a level of class in everything that i do including my style so it's like if i'm gonna wear like a small like a skirt like that's a little shorter i can't pair that with like a tank top that barely covers anything at all it's about mm -hmm. just truly representing your style in a class or at least for me i try to just always have class and it's usually 100 degrees outside so <laughs> yeah. in arizona yeah. So, yeah it's just um really i think it's around the label and knowing that what they represent their brand to be is if it lines up like i wouldn't partner or buy a brand that is all like club like going out clothes because i just that's not who i am and yeah. i'm not i don't want to represent myself as such you know what i mean mm -hmm. So yeah, and sustainability is a huge factor. So I'm like, I try to avoid the big box retailers that, you know, just are all about the trends because I think trends come and go, but true style, like, and fashion, like that's something that is everlasting. It doesn't go out, like, you know, so just maintaining that kind of level of, yeah, just timeless classiness is what I strive for. Do you know by, 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 by name, the people that work at the, Good wheels nearby. A hundred percent. They are they're like friends. They follow me on Instagram because they see what I buy. And I'm like, even if they don't know me, I'm like, I promise I'm not a crazy person that just buys everything I see. I I do a try on, which I have one to do this afternoon. If you want to see one, there will be a Goodwill haul. And, but yeah, I'm like, we're on first name basis, and it's pretty fabulous. <laughs> I definitely see you see you that because 
um, I, I, I can see you making friends because every story that you make, I mean, do you have special muscles that make you smile all the time? <laughs> <laughs> because you, you're a smiling just... monster. I mean, monster, I seem like you get a smiling person, all smiles. <laughs> I'm just a really happy person, honestly. I'm like, I tell my parents all the time, you know, I'm 29 years old and I had braces all through high school. And I thank my parents at least once a year. I'm like, thank you for giving me braces because I smile a lot. These people yes, stay like, looking good. <laughs> and you do have a beautiful smile. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh. Now, now one, one thing that uh, any person that uh, takes uh, social media uh, seriously and you do some research, um, they talk often about, um, how do you call this, um, being consistent. Yeah. And uh, uh, you are consistent, but, but how, how do you do it? I mean, how, what motivates you or, or how do you plan or, or how do you do it? Because you've been consistent all these years that I've been following you and uh, uh, your account grows and uh, how, how do you do it? Um, honestly, it's just about intention. Like um, it, it really is, uh, Instagram is difficult because there's a whole algorithm that goes behind everything, but it's about being like holding yourself accountable to be like, you know what, especially if you start establish, if you share enough of a specific thing often enough, your followers come to expect that from you. And if you don't yes. provide what they, what you have already given them enough of, they're going to be like, well, does she really care about this? You know? And it's about like, I share my coffee. And yes. Okay because you, I you always have the shot, the shot the of the coffee going. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that is something or like doing yoga or walking my dog yeah. or just like people want to know who you really are. So you should show them who you really are and, the consistency part of that just really comes with it. Like, and finding the balance of like, so my husband's not on social media. So I know yeah. that I work very hard during the day. So that at the end of the day, we can unplug and we can spend very specific time mm -hmm. together where I'm not just on my phone or on my laptop doing emails. It's really separating that time and putting your priorities in the right place. And I know that there's a level of expectation with what I share. So I try to be very consistent and posting every day and, sharing the true snippets of my daily life of what mm -hmm. I'm doing because the people that follow you want to follow you and see what you're doing. And honestly, if I'm a big believer, if you don't like what I'm sharing, then you don't have to follow me. But if you do, mm -hmm. like, I hope you enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like the right people will follow you and they want to see who you really are. Yeah. And, and, and you are very natural and they like it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't look forced or, yeah scripted as in um like there are there are certain things that you always do definitely the the, the cup of coffee i love it with it i was asking you the other day what do you use to, to do that right my cold brew baker i always have a yeah, I, cold brew. I, drink so, I drink so much cold brew i can't afford to go to i don't even go to starbucks anymore but to dunk it and get mm. a cold brew every day so i just they're expensive it is. It adds up <laughs> so much, and I save so much money making my cold brew at home every yes. single day, and always. But it's, it's so nice that shot with the with the cup, and I know it's <laughs> always when I go through your stories every day. I know it's gonna be there. <laughs> it, it will be there every morning, and sometimes in the afternoon when I need that pick me up. <laughs> but even if you do it with intention, and 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 you do have a a style and a consistency, um. Why does it look natural? Is it because, like, were you like this before going into social media? Were you consistent or something that you had developed? Or where does it come from? For me, I'm a very big routine person. My habits are, I try really strongly to form good habits because as soon as I start regressing and getting lazy, I'm just less productive. I'm less confident. I, I just, it affects my mood. When I'm busy, I feel better. And so I wake up every morning and I have a set plan. I write out my to-do list in my planner. I know what I want to achieve every day. And it's actually really helped that I hold myself accountable on Instagram now. On my stories, I usually share my like rough schedule of what I want to accomplish that day because it holds me accountable. And it's mm -hmm. 
something that um, I think is really important to just live with intention. And I have, ha I have a daily routine. I have a morning routine. And if that gets altered, it does affect my productivity throughout the day. So yeah, for me, a schedule and ha like your habits are so important. They can make or break you on any given situation. It, it, it does show. It does show, Ashley, because your account is, is natural. Well, thank it, you. It is, it is exactly what you're saying. It is routine. Well, I must admit, um, I skipped many of the stories when you put the whole thing because I'm not going to buy. <laughs> right. You don't want to buy my size two dresses? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to show my belly? I think I have twins. <laughs> I think my would approve. <laughs> <Or maybe two. laughs> so I do skip through those. Uh, but uh, and that's fair. It's, if it's not right for what you want to see, you know, you just you just gotta click through or ignore, yeah. like you know, like, and that's not a bad thing to do. Like, if yeah. it's not on brand and in line with what you want to see, then mm -hmm. why would you like pretend to? Wa you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. about again being authentic. Mm -hmm. And 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 it shows. It shows because <laughs> even if uh, I I skip through the through the the fashion slips when you do once a week, you have a whole show. Yeah. Um, I know that your account as a whole is something that uh, I look forward to following every day uh, well, because I, I, I know that I'm following a person and, and you transpire that in the way that you do things. And that is, that is, uh, I don't have my glasses on. Somebody say oh, hi, baby. That's one of my girlfriends. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure she's saying that to you. <laughs> <Not to me. laughs> Maybe you're babe too. You can be babe too. Yeah. You know, just say hey. <laughs> yeah, just thank you so much. It, this really is my real life. This is what I, yeah. even if I wasn't showing it on social media, it's what I do. And so mm -hmm. I'm just very blessed and fortunate that people enjoy following it and people want to see it. And that it's very enriching to my life to know that if I can influence or inspire one person just to form a good habit or to choose to find happiness in life, mm -hmm. like, you know, that's doing a good job. Yes. Now, the, the, the second part of how I see you as an influencer, um, besides the passion, is the fact that uh, you do have, you, you went through an injury that is permanent, that is painful, and uh, that is visible. There are some things that are invisible, but yours is, is truly visible. Um, when, uh, like the, the brace that you wear all the time, uh, you are not ashamed of that. It's, thank you. It's taken some time, because I'm not going to lie. I, I, it's not all rainbows and unicorns all the time. You know, everybody no. has bad days and the pain does, you know very well, chronic pain is a monster. Nerve pain is... Mm -hmm. a whole new level of pain but it's so much about just like this is who I am I, I can't pretend to have it together all the time and it's not that this doesn't hurt it hurts 24 7 all the time and it's very frustrating but if I was to choose to let that lead my mood every day if that was my main focus of just how much pain I'm in all the time that wouldn't not only would it be not good for me but that you know you got to put out the energy you want to receive. If you want to receive good energy, you have to put out good energy. Mm -hmm. And it's so important. People don't want to surround themselves with somebody that is negative and complaining. And, you know, it, admitting that it hurts isn't necessarily like complaining. That's just being very real about a situation. And everybody yeah. has something. This just mm -hmm. happens to be my something. And it's a pain in the ass, but, you know, <laughs> you get through it. <laughs> how, but how do you do it? How? How do you grow better and not better? Because you do have all the uh, all the reasons to be better, um, and yet um, you you remain positive, real. You remain real, but you you have grown better. What? How? How do you do it? Honestly, for me, my faith is a huge factor that spending mm -hmm. that time with God in prayer and in my solo time of not being like, well, why it's not why did this happen to me? It's just knowing that I was given this because I can handle it. And 
taking the time to admit that it's hard to surround yourself with the right people that you can talk to, that you can reach out to your tribe of your people in your life. That is completely your choice. And you have to be so specific with the people you surround yourself with. And I am very blessed that my husband is my number one supporter. He's my best friend. I can tell him when it's the best, I can tell him when it's the worst. And He's mm -hmm. just always there to support me and my family. And honestly, my dog has like, she has saved my mood on me. She's 10 days. or 11 years old, uh, right? She's a, yeah, she's 11, almost 12. Yeah. But really, it's just, you know, like, just realizing that, I, I don't know. I don't know why it's so simple to me, but it just, it's something that clicks of just, I don't want to be an unhappy person. Mm -hmm. When I'm around people that complain and are just negative, it's exhausting. And an injury like this is exhausting enough. Why would I let my mood exhaust me even more? Because that's just putting effort into being unhappy. Why would I try, mm -hmm. like, why would I allow that to enter my life when I could choose to be positive, to choose to find a bright side? And mm -hmm. you know what? I'm waking up every day. Um, I have two feet I can walk on. I'm learning to be left-handed still after 11 years of this. Like, it's just, there's always something to smile about. And if there's not, then there's something in your life that you need to change to find something to smile about. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I don't know, for me, it's just, I, I try to be live very intentionally of knowing that if it's not good for me and my attitude, then maybe I shouldn't be doing it. That's my very real sign that, you know, if it's just not helping my life and I only want to do things that do help my life. Was it like this in for the beginning? Like a, when uh, I think you fell or something fell on you or it was at work, right? Yes, I, it was actually, it's so frustrating because I, uh, I, I was an athlete my entire life, like grew up in sports. I was always strong and confident. I was 18 and I just picked up a box. Um, I was working at Walgreens, you know, a very standard retail job and just picked up a box. And when I picked it up, it was full of shampoos and conditioners. And I went to readjust my grip. And when I caught the box, like on my forearms like this, my shoulder just dislocated backwards and tore everything out when it went back in, nothing reconnected properly. But we thought it would be just a simple shoulder injury. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just surgery, bing, bang, boom, she'll be back at it. And then something went wrong in surgery. And about six to nine months after my surgery, we found out it was going to be permanent. And it wasn't always, I wasn't always positive. It hit me very hard. I gained I just, I was so unhappy. I was so frustrated and I hit a really dark phase of depression where I was so happy, but I was like, I literally like ate my feelings. I gained like 60 pounds. Like I just capped out and it just, it was hard. It was really hard because I, again, I was 18, like yeah. right, going a very specific direction. And then to all of a sudden have a complete halt and a lifestyle change that mm. I had no control over. And it took a very serious, honestly, I just woke up one day and it's, it sounds so simple, but I woke up one day and just realized how unhappy I was. And I told my husband, who was just my boyfriend at the time, I was like, I need to fix this. Like something's got to change. And it was very intentional, small little habits of, I started, we lived in Huntington Beach, California at the time. And I told him, I'm like, I think I need to start doing yoga because that's something I've always been an athlete. And I just stopped exercising just because mm -hmm. I didn't think I could run I can't I was a runner like and I can't run with this because it's too bouncy and yeah like just what I couldn't do what I used to do and it took me a long time to realize that just because I can't do what I used to do doesn't mean I can't do other things that are going to benefit me so it was just like I I really just woke up one day and I started going to a free yoga on the beach and trying to do yoga with one arm as an at the time I was over I've eight. seen I, you though I've seen you uh, those pictures and those videos that you do it how you do like a backwards, which to me is impossible already, with one hand, with one it's, arm. It's persistence. It's practice. It's making an effort every day to achieve what you want to achieve. And you can. You can really, if you put in the work, that is one of my favorite things to say, especially in fitness. Like, if you put in the work, put in the effort, you can do anything if you believe you can do it and if you work towards it. Things don't just mm -hmm. get handed to you. You have to put in the effort. You have to try. You have to want it more than anybody else wants it for you. And I told myself I wanted to be able to do a back bend because I used to be able to do them. I was a competitive springboard diver. So I used to flip and twist and do tricks. And I was like, no, I'm going to be able to do this. And it took a long time, but yeah, now I can, for the past, I don't know how long it's been, but probably about six years. I'm like, 
yep, I can do a one handed back bend right here and just make it happen. And but because I worked towards it every yeah. day, I tried and I practiced and I fell on my butt a lot, but I got up and I kept going because that's what you have to do in life is get back up and keep going. Yes. You know, you, you just said, uh, I'm not paraphrase, you just said that uh, the fact that you cannot do what you were used to do doesn't mean that you cannot do something different. Something like this, right? Yeah. Um, that is something that uh, I am going through right now because I, I've been on disability for two years mm. due to uh, mental health and also um, fibromyalgia, which has chronic, uh, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, and um, herniated disc, and a bunch of stuff as well. And uh, um, when, when this whole COVID um, started, I saw my, I'm a pastor, and I saw my church, um, how they were making some changes to adapt to online viewing um, that they were already doing, but they had to change the service and all those things. And uh, technology, I, I mean, I'm a geek, right? And, uh, and I knew I was like, I was born for this crisis management <laughs> with technology in a church setting, mm -hmm. except that I'm not working. Yeah. So uh, I saw myself, man, I mean, I do have all the equipment, the video equipment, photography equipment, screens, lights, mics, you name it. I have it all in my basement, uh, but, I, but, but, but I cannot use it. And I, I felt so depressed, not because of the COVID situation, but because I knew that I could do and uh, I was equipped and I have the good ideas because I follow all the social media trends. I follow all the uh, social media and technology um, um, world when it comes to ministry, but I couldn't do anything. And I cannot because um, I have constant brain fog, constant. Yeah. So it is, uh, it is very difficult now for me to, um, to, to process things, right? Yeah. And, uh, and having even conversations, like these conversations that we are going to have, this, I, I love doing it, but I'm putting all my energy into it, and it's going to take me a couple of days to recover from this. So yeah. just to put a bit in context, right? Right. So I, I was in the basement, and uh, um, my wife needs the, the, uh, the of the office downstairs, so we had to change because she's a teacher and now she needs to teach online. And yeah. I was putting all the video things away and I started crying like, like a baby. I was crying um, because I couldn't do what I love doing. And, and my wife for the last, these last few weeks has been telling me over and over and over what you just said. The fact that you kind of do what you were used to do doesn't mean that you can't do other things. Um, focus on what you can do. Yes. And uh, but, but that is difficult. That is difficult because it's like a. I'm 40. How old am I? <laughs> I think I'm, I'm, I'm 49. No, 48. 48. I'm 48. <laughs> and, 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 and at this age, you have to rethink things. You have to redo yeah. something. And uh, it's difficult. Plus, it's difficult for me to plan, to process, to, to, to have. My, this is a reason why I'm a disability. And, and she keeps saying that, what you just said. She keeps yeah. saying, focus on what you can do. It doesn't have to be the same. And that's the key word is focus on what you can do. Like, yes. it's not focusing on what you can't do. It's knowing that you are capable of so much. It might be different, but there's so much opportunity. You're never too old or too broken or too injured, you know, to change your life and to do something and to start taking positive steps towards a new goal. That's just, 
in this life, we always have to pivot into one direction or another. Sometimes it's easier than others, but mm -hmm. just having the ability to pivot, to, to try yeah. and you might fail, but keep trying, you know, like, yeah. It's so, it's just, it's a mindset to have that mindset of knowing that you're capable of so much and you're not only a pastor, you're mm -hmm. a smart, spiritual, strong man that a smart, capable human being that can do anything you set your mind to. And mm -hmm. it can be as simple as writing out your goal, like writing out ideas. Like if you want to do something, take out the equipment and figure out, okay, Today, yeah. we're going to take one step towards this new goal. Mm -hmm. It's one positive step, one day at a time, one moment at a time. And yes, that's the uh, blessing that you have. A, your wife is a smart woman. That She you, is. Oh, she's my hero, believe me. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and having people in your life that are positive reinforcements yes, for you yes. is so important. It is. Yes. That's a huge blessing. Yes. I'm so glad you have her, too. Yes. Encourage you, especially in your your harder moments, because it's not always easy, but nobody's life is. If your life is easy, that means you're not working hard enough and you're not challenging yourself. That's and true. That's true. When you're dealing with a chronic issue or a life changing situation, it's harder than a lot of things, but it's mm -hmm. not the hardest thing out there. So you just got to put in the effort to try yes. one, one thing at a time. And God, by the grace of God and by yeah. having a strong spouse, it's that's easier than some people have it when you're if you're doing it alone it's a lot harder so just, yes yes it's a blessing and i'm glad this that is, you have that this is this is one of the thousand reasons why i enjoy following you thank <laughs> you you are so inspirational you are oh, so so, so inspirational oh. and um um i like it i like it i really like it how you are real and, and I'm, I'm not trying to butter you up or whatever i mean none of us is gaining anything from here besides uh, um um establishing a, a a deeper friendship and encouraging other people but I, it, it is true is is uh, uh that's why I, I believe that you are an influencer with all caps all well, thank caps. you <laughs> i am definitely the, i'm something i'm very proud to know it took a long time for me to realize i am the exact same person in real life as you see behind the screen and that's just take it or leave it like this is who yeah. i am so. yeah I, I i love it how you from time to time uh, uh, drop the f word and <laughs> yeah. totally real, totally real. <laughs> i do love jesus but yeah, I still talk a lot. I, I uh, there's certain words that aren't necessary. You wouldn't expect to come out of this mouth, but yeah, I grew up a military <laughs> child. They're there. <laughs> Jesus loves me anyway. <laughs> yes, you know, as I, I mean, this is probably a, a, a conversation, I'm thinking for another conversation, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me that uh, uh, Jesus used uh, some French colorful language sometimes because he really got pissed off with <laughs> with a few people. Like he was very uh, uh, blunt and all of that. And when he was in the temple, crashing the tables there. I don't think he was speaking poetry. Right. I, I, he probably wasn't the most polite in that moment. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, um, Ashley, thank you so much for oh, for joining us and i i can't wait i'm i wanna um i'm gonna save the video uh, so theoretically i should be able to save the video but i think you have to have a a lot of followers to have some features oh, so yeah. i I, we, I will uh mine doesn't have that so what i will do is i will um, um screen record i will replay it yeah. and i will screen record it the comp the the, the, the um, uh, the, the quality is not as good, but right. it still is good. And I will put it on Facebook, YouTube. Um, oh, cute. And I, I really want people to uh, to follow you because um, their, their life will be better because Thank of you. the principles that you, the principles that guide your life and how you do it. So um, the last couple of minutes, two things. One, uh, you choose the order. One is, is how to find you so people can can follow you. Um, I, I will put some links as well, but uh, what's the best way to, to, to follow you? 
and then uh, you have the um, the floor um, to say something to our both of our followers, something that you want to um, advise, you want to give them, or, or something like that. Well, that's perfect. You can find me at Smashingly Ashley. It is exactly how it sounds, uh, with a little underscore at the end. But if you type Smashingly it, Ashley, it pops up. I'm right there. Um, and then smashinglyashley.com. And it's pretty straightforward. I try to be the same on all platforms. So it's easy to find me. Um, and yeah, honestly, all I just want to say is whatever you're going through in life, like I'm just a huge advocate that you're capable of anything. You, you are in complete control of your mindset, like how you like you can't control what happens to you. And this is a very clear representation of that. But you can control exactly how you react to it. That is the only thing you can control is your mm -hmm. response, your reaction, your thoughts. You are the only person that can control this. And if don't let other people have a like a factor in that, you know, like it's just your thoughts are so powerful. If you believe you can't do something, you're not going to be able to do it. Instead of living with fear, live with the possibility of it's not what if I fail, what if I succeed? You know, just start putting that positivity out there and just try to live a happy, positive life and do things that make you happy and talk to people that make you happy. Surround yourself with positivity and all of a sudden you will realize how beautiful life is. Like you focus on the good and the good, more good comes in. And I just really like, that's how I try to live my life is, you know, one positive thing at a time. And that doesn't mean there's not negative hard things mm -hmm. in my life, but I just choose to focus on the positive and that doesn't make me naive. I just know what I want to put my energy into. So I hope that can encourage anyone else to focus on the good and to find the positive, because I promise you, if, Everybody has something positive in their life. You just have to be willing to see it. So open yeah. your eyes, broaden your horizon, and smile about it, because life is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you. It was such a pleasure, and thank you for having me. My pleasure. We'll be in touch. Yeah, Bye we'll now. Be in touch. Talk to you soon. Bye.